Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plumber Den. In this week's episode, we're going to be doing a painting tutorial of a fortified seawall. So i kind of uh, been doing this project uh, for actually a prize for the Great Pirate Paint-Off competition uh, and that uh, the Blood and Pigment channel's uh, hosting. And I, I uh, committed to giving a prize for that event uh, in the terrain category. I did it last year, uh, and I wanted to do it again this year, and I really wanted to come up with something special. Uh, so I decided to uh, do seawalls, uh, but not just any seawalls. I incorporated some of the other previous projects I've done, like the uh, the Fisherman's House, uh, and I did, uh, you know, just fortifications in general, uh, kind of just added a bunch of different, different, different projects. Uh, even the watchtower, kind of uh, some of the uh, things I did in there, was incorporated into this project. So it's kind of like a a bunch of projects that I did in the channel. And I just combined it into one, you know, piece of terrain. It's actually two sections, uh, two sea walls uh, um, that you you know attach to your docks, similar to the ones that I built uh, earlier on in this channel. Uh, so really, we're just going to cover the painting portion of it. So I've already built seawalls on the channel, but I wanted to spend some more time uh, discussing uh, speed paints uh, and using contrast paints and uh, textured paints uh, to put over top of the craft paint. So I still paint most of the terrain with craft paint, um, but uh, then I add these extras in afterwards uh, and it really uh, makes a, you know, takes it to the next level, I would say. And that's kind of what I want to uh, spend more time on in this particular episode. And then you guys can see what uh, you can win. Uh, so the competition for the terrain, I think your last entries can be submitted into the Blood and Pigment channel um, by the 29th of February. So that's the last day you can submit uh, terrain entries. And uh, I'll put links to the uh, Blood and Pigment uh, channel down below, uh, as well as Firelock Games. They repost all these competitions as well. They're a supporter of this uh, painting competition. There's other prizes that you can win. But yeah, there's not just the terrain. There's lots of different uh, other things you could potentially win in this competition. So I suggest you go over and check it out and see what kind of prizes you can win. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll take a look, a quick look at what we're doing. So this is the seawall, and you see I kind of did a lot of different uh, textures. Kind of went with a tiled roof. I've never actually done one like that before, uh, but uh, of course it's playable as usual. Uh, I made a spot for uh, you can see on here like a swivel gun on there, uh, and then there's uh, two cannon ports, so you can have some cannon crew in the top there. Uh, so I made two of these. So there's this one right here, and then the, the second one is virtually the same. Um, you know, maybe I don't have the fishnet on this one, but other than that, uh, pretty much the same is fully playable. Um, so really, uh, if you have the seawall, uh, you've got actually four cannons on the one side and two swivels done back. Uh, it's actually, a, you know, a good defensive uh, wall. This could be used as a fortification, and you know, you don't necessarily have to use it for blood and plunder. This actually could be used for all sorts of different games. It could just be a, you know, fortification wall. To a city or a town, maybe you put a instead of a dock in the center, you put like a a, a gateway or something like that, right? Uh, so I kind of made it very versatile, and uh, so whoever wins this prize will be able to use this piece of terrain in all sorts of different projects. All right, uh, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table and let's start painting this terrain. <music> Okay, so I figured I'd start off by showing you the piece covered in the black full card craft paint. So this is usually what I prime my uh, pieces of terrain with, uh, is the uh, full card black craft paint. Uh, it's really good sturdy paint, uh, makes everything durable, uh, and it's a good base to put all the other colors on. So uh, to use uh, the speed paints on this terrain, uh, it's really about the undertones, and uh, the speed paints work really good 
uh, with the standard colors that I use, the uh, craft paint colors. Now we want to cover the majority of the terrain in craft paint. So this is a real brown standard color I use for undertones. I like putting earth tones down first. Uh, obviously I've sped the camera up a little bit so we don't spend too much time on here, but just kind of showing you how I apply it. I actually do add quite a, a bit of real brown. Now, uh, getting back to adding more undertones, um, so the speed paints become, uh, you know, it's better if they're on a lighter color, uh, they're more apparent, but it, uh, you can put it on darker colors too, and, and that's what we're going to exp explore uh, in this episode is uh, really adding uh, that over top of the craft paints. Now you want the majority of the piece covered in craft paint. Uh, you know, obviously speed paints and stuff like that are expensive. Uh, and we just want to use them to highlight the piece, uh, not be the primary color source. Um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, the uh, craft paint's going to do most of the legwork on that in that department. So now we move to the bark brown, and you can see I just kind of, I just actually slowed the camera down a little bit here. <laughs> uh, so you can see that we're just kind of uh, rubbing it on, not necessarily uh, uh, the real brown. I actually put quite a bit on, but I still have some of the black tones. And again, lightening the center of the docks uh, because we want that weathered look to it uh, where the most traffic will be. Uh, and that, that's what I'm kind of just doing right here right now is just uh, lightening that center. I just wanted to show you more of this uh, technique again. I usually kind of just gloss over this and just tell you I painted the different colors and show you them. But I kind of just show you how I added them, you know, apply them to the piece. So then we're going to move to the Pablo. Just going to show you briefly. I'm doing the roof as well at the same time here. Just showing you the uh, rest of the piece uh, where I've applied the... Uh, um, bark brown. So this is the Pablo. This is kind of an orange color. Uh, and again, uh, if you've watched this channel for a while, you've already seen me apply this, uh, these colors. Uh, but I just really wanted to go over how I actually apply it to the piece. Um, and uh, you can see I'm still lightening the center. Uh, and you can see how really bright this is. Uh, but it, it it's actually it dries a little bit darker so it looks a little really stark right now really bright um but it does dry uh not as bright uh and uh but it's a great undertone uh, especially on stonework uh have that orange underneath uh and it's going to really brighten up our docks too uh we're going to add some a lot more colors to the top of that dock but uh um we're just adding up layers adding the layers uh, so we're just kind of highlighting the whole piece with that uh, with that Pablo, and you can see I sped the camera up again, <laughs> just to speed it up a little bit, just so you can see roughly how I added on. So this is after I've done it. You can see I've kind of put it over everything. I did apply a little bit more of that to the roof um, because eventually I just want it to be like a terracotta color on those uh, kind of uh, shingles. So this is camel. Uh, and I've barely, I've moved to a small square brush now, and I barely have any paint on this brush. And really, I'm just, this actually takes quite some time, but I just kind of rework and work these uh, stones. Mainly because I just don't want to uh, add too much camel right away to it. I don't want to cover it, all that, uh, those undercolors that we've added. So I'm just lightly adding it, kind of highlighting some of the edges, maybe make the rocks look a little sharper by painting the edges. And you can see I'm just tapping it on and uh, working the whole piece. So this was probably, I would say, of the stages that I did paint here, this was probably the most time-consuming part. Um, just because I didn't want to go a little too crazy on those stones. Uh, and uh, add them up. I want them to be a little bit darker uh, than I've, you know, sometimes I make them a lot lighter than this, but I want them to make them darker. Also, we're going to hit the camel on the edges of the wood um, and the tops of those, uh, you know, it, those logs there. It just uh, makes it look like that's where the wood is cut and some of these uh, spikes that are coming out of the wall here. Um, again, I'm just going to add a few different tones on there. So you can see after, you can see how much I little bit I did in that video, the, you know, the portion there I videoed uh, and how, what it looks like now. Uh, it, uh, you know, it, it took some time to get that covered. So now we use real brown and yellow ochre. And again, this is something that I've done before um, on my docs video. And 
really just uh, I want to light these dogs up, but I have a kind of a yellow tone to it. So this is the first color I put down, and it's like the I would say the darkest of the yellows, mainly because I'm adding the real brown. And you can adjust; you can add more brown to the to the mixture, or add more yellow. Um, eventually, we're gonna go to just a solid yellow ochre to really lighten it up. So I'm just showing you I'm going to do all the tops of the woods everywhere here. So you got this kind of a dull um, yellow brown mixture, which is a good base um, uh, for the other colors that we're going, to, we're going to be putting on top of it, especially the speed paints. So, But before we do that, I'm going to go to the yellow ochre on its own. So with no brown added, we're just going to go straight yellow ochre. And really brighten and I always start from the center and work my way out again that's you know to me that's where the most traffic will be so that's where I spend the most time lightening it up a little darker on the edges and right up uh, where it bumps up against the um, stone wall there it would be a little bit uh, darker so this this takes a bit of time you're just you're constantly working it over Working it over with the yellow, you put a little yellow on there and then you spread it around. This is not really a dry brush, this is more like rubbing the paint in. And that's why uh, I've mentioned before that I like using, um, you know, this is popsicle sticks and uh, coffee stir sticks that I've used here. Uh, when you have actual real wood in there, you can really rub the paint in there and you get a really nice effect to it. Um, you know, if this was, uh, let's say I made foam planks, which you could. Uh, it just wouldn't be the same, and I wouldn't be able to do the same kind of technique adding or applying the paint. Uh, it just wouldn't apply to the uh, foam as well. So I prefer to use wood. Especially, this adds a lot of strength to the structure too as well, um, having all this wood combined. So this is the first speed paint, dark wood. Uh, and we're not we're going to leave the docks alone for a bit and the floors. We're going to move to, I, I kind of wanted to color out um, these planks, so kind of frame out this uh, these guard towers. Um, so I'm going to add this dark wood. And it goes great over top of this, uh, you know, uh, over top of whatever the ready colors we've already added in with all the Pablo and Bark Brown and, and uh, Real Brown. And this uh, covers out real nice. Now, uh, these speed paints, make sure you shake them up good. Um, if you, uh, don't shake them up enough, they'll actually finish with a, like a shiny finish to it, unless you're going for that. Um, you really want to mix them up and, uh, they'll actually, they'll dry with a matte finish, uh, which is really what you're, you know, for this particular piece that I'm painting right now, I want a more matte finish on it. Um, so, uh, I really had to shake those up good and make sure I do that. So I'm going to add a few spots on those uh, logs, uh, kind of the docks there, um, but uh, not uh, too much. So as you can see, after I've added it on there, I like the two contrasts between the, uh, you know, the speed paint and the craft paint. So now we're going to go to sand golem. This is actually one of my favorite speed po uh, paint colors. It, it really is. You can apply to a lot of things. You can apply it to like staffs and. And weapons and uh, and I really like to uh, put it on top of the yellow ochre here and it adds a really nice look to it for uh, weathering your docks uh, and give it a you know like I said taking it to the next level with uh, adding these speed paints now these speed paints a little bit goes a long way you don't need to put a whole bunch on there and you can just keep dragging and keep dragging and keep dragging it uh, and just a little drop can get quite a bit uh, painted um, I know a lot of people don't want to use this kind of stuff on craft, on like on terrain, for example, um, because it is expensive and, uh, you know, but you, you don't have to use much. Like I said, the craft paint did most of the work. Uh, you're just uh, highlighting and adding tones in here to uh, uh, really, uh, you know, kind of somewhat exaggerate the uh, decks. So you can see this is after I've added it. And then I'm going to go to this uh, this yellow speed paint, and we're going to brighten it up even more. So I'm just kind of going to go over top where I already have, and I'm just going to keep adding it uh, to this uh, dock. And I'm really making kind of a golden yellow color. I'm going to come back with some gray afterwards and make some different colored planks and um, kind of adjust it a little bit. But uh, I really like this look. 
And it really sticks out nice on the table too, on the tabletop. It's really bright. It's somewhat exaggerated because, uh, you know, your ducks probably wouldn't be that bright. Kind of like uh, the color where I first had it was a craft paint. It was just the, uh, the yellow and brown color mixture on there. It was kind of a dull yellow. That's probably more realistic too than what it would look like. But uh, I really like this bright look to it. Um, and I really wanted to show off... Uh, how well these speed paints uh, paint over top of your craft paint. So you can see I continue to use my small square brush. For these finer details, that's pretty much what I use. It's actually that brush is about as wide as a, as a coffee stir stick. Uh, and you can see I've uh, kind of, uh, I haven't been showing you the roof, but I've been painting it as we go along. I've been adding the same colors to the bottoms uh, of those uh, roofs. And then we're going to kind of go to a brighter red and orange on the top. So this is after I've added it all, uh, the colors onto it. Um, now it certainly dries a little different than it is now. This is me, it's still kind of wet. Um, you know, 24 hours from now, it'll be a, a tad different, uh, the final look. So I use that graveyard gray, uh, and this kind of just gives you, a, I wanted to have a few different colored planks in here. Uh, just kind of some of them are a little older and ratty. Um, I've gone, uh, if you look at the video on the fisherman's house, um, I really had a whole pile of different colored planks and I really liked that look. It was, it looked like there was, the house was made out of spare parts or just parts of ships and stuff like that. And they, they kind of just built it together, but I wanted this one to be a little more uniform, but you know, just add a few different planks in there with a little bit of gray on it. Uh, and this is good. Uh, this gray is also good to, uh, darken around your stones too. Uh, and these, you know, these edges around the edges here just make it a little darker. Uh, uh, you know, I usually use Agrax Earth Shader, uh, you know, the contrast paint, and we'll probably put some of that on at the very end, but, um, you know, kind of leaning on the speed paint a little bit more. I like these speed paints. Uh, they're, I don't know, just more vibrant. I really like them. Um, and you can see how that's what I meant about adding it to the stones, just kind of where they're uh, touching each other. Just make it a little darker in there. It'll be a little more grime, a little grunge in there. So I'm adding that uh, graveyard gray into there as well. Also, I really like the effect of uh, the speed paints mixed with each other too. Uh, they really uh, give you interesting looks. So this is after I've co covered some of the planks. You can see that the gray looks really good. It adds a lot of age to the wood. Uh, and I got some of it in my stones there. Uh, really just... Uh, Getting down to the finer details. So now I'm going to hit those stones again with mummy robe. So usually I would add a couple more uh, of these different uh, miniature paints. But I'm only going to use the uh, mummy robe this time. And I'm just going to brighten all these stones up. So this was a little more time consuming as well. Not as much as when I did the camel. Um, but uh, it definitely, you know, you don't want to go too crazy and make the stones too white. Uh, I wanted them just to be brighter than they are right now. Kind of match the intensity of the top of the docks that I painted. Uh, and then it's a good time to hit the ends of these, I would say, little logs or spears or spikes coming out of the uh, corner of the wall. And I really like that. It looks like freshly cut wood. Uh, and that's kind of what the end of the uh, would look like. And I just, again, just similar to the camel, just working the stones over very slowly. Uh, very little paint on the brush and just kind of works through all these stones. It's actually kind of, <laughs> I find it therapeutic. It's actually very relaxing to do the stone work. I really like this portion of it. So we're just going to spin it around a little bit here and take a look at all the uh, stones. Uh, I added stones uh, a little different than the last sea walls. I added stones to the back here, uh, make it look more like a solitary island of stones that it's sitting on. So now I'm going to move to my first uh, contrast paint, a Skeleton Horde. And I've used this for a lot of things. I use it for a lot of weathering. I like to, on my temples and stuff, it, may, it looks like uh, maybe grimy rain or weathering of some sort uh, is coming down on the stones. And I want to capture that. Also, uh, we're going to put it on the uh, bindings around those logs. Uh, just to, just to, So they're not so bright right now. They're kind of just a camel color. And maybe a little bit on the top of those spears. And, and uh, just to kind of add a little bit more weathering to everything. So this is kind of tedious work. And 
really you just kind of add it where you think it might happen or appear <laughs> so you just kind of add it on there but skeleton horde is good for kind of that it's a little more runny um and it uh it's good for just adding this kind of tones and you can see how i've added to those uh spikes where i got three different tones there um you know this uh, a couple of different speed paints that i added to those and the uh and now this uh contrast paint and they're all just layered over top of each other over top of craft paint uh and really has a, a really cool effect so those are the bindings i was uh referring to just i'm gonna add some skeleton ore to that and I kind of just work this around the entire piece. We're not going to watch me do the whole thing. I'm just kind of showing you that uh, this is kind of what I'm going to be doing throughout the entire piece. So this is after it's completed. And it gives it kind of a really authentic look. So now we're going to address this uh, fish netting. I decided to go with a commando uh, green here. And I'm just going to lightly brush it over top of these, uh, this netting. Which I already have uh, some great colors in with all those craft paints we've added. Uh, and you can see adding the green over top uh, of the Pablo uh, gives it a really interesting look. It looks like it's kind of an aged fish net. Uh, and uh, I really like how these, uh, you know, I've used this before actually, this color over top of the Pablo. And I really like the way it looks. Again, another two products combined together. Uh, totally different types of paints, but they look really awesome together. Uh, and it uh, gives you a really good, you know, ratty looking uh, fishnet that says it's just thrown on top of the seawall here. So you just kind of brush it on there, and uh, we're not going to watch me watch paint the whole thing. This is after it's completed, um, and I really like the way that uh, looks. So this is Malignant Green. Uh, it's a speed paint. Uh, I, I love this for mothy or just growth growing on things. It's a great speed paint for adding to the bottom of your ships, these stones which are close to the water line. Um, and uh, it's, I'm going to add some to that fishnet to make it look like there's some of the grime leaking out of it around the fishnet, which is, you know, just gives it a little more authentic look. Well, these details really, um, you know, take it to the next level, make it look more realistic. I really try to make an effort of making uh, my terrain look a little more realistic um, than I can. Uh, like I said, I've I've made some choices with some star colors to make it a little bit brighter, just so it looks more appealing on the game table and, and from uh, from a distance. So you can see I've added kind of all over the place. I've added this green everywhere. I think there would be uh, green. So then we got this fire giant um, orange, and uh, this is a great undertone if you're doing uh, these kind of like terracotta tiles. So again, this looks really wet uh, and shiny. Uh, it actually dries matte, uh, but uh, make sure you again shake it really well because if you don't, it it won't dry matte. <laughs> It'll dry shiny. Um, so you got to mix those colors together. So we're going to leave the roof now, and we're going to move to a texture uh, paint. So this is one of the texture paints, Sterling Mud. I've used this a few times on the channel as well. I used it actually on my last seawalls. And it's it's kind of just a thick paint, and it's got kind of granules in it. Uh, and it gives it a really authentic mud look. Um, so we're going to lay this down first, and then we're going to add that uh, huge miniatures uh, dirt paste on top of that as well so we're really going to get a nice little muddy feel around these stones maybe the water's a little shallower there and it recedes and it just leaves muck there so we're kind of adding that on there and you can and you can pull that up onto the stones and makes it look really mucky i really like this uh, sterling mud uh it uh really good to texture paint and this is adding just another level of detail uh, things you expect to see uh, on a, you know, a water line like that. So this is lava orange, and I'm just going to use this to highlight. So now that that uh, red is dried, and you can see it's flat, it's not shiny like I, I applied it on. And now we're going to use this lava orange, and now we're just going to highlight it. And come back and highlight it. So the combination of these colors are fantastic. I really like the way it looks now once we get it all dry i'm going to add some more um, 
uh, agrax or a shader and some skeleton horde to the top just to make it look like dirty rain or something on top there just to look a little more weathered so this is that dirt texture which i just used in my last video for doing those nights uh huge miniatures was so kind to send that out for me to try out and i really liked that uh and they sent me this little palette knife uh so i'm going to use it for this piece too uh, this is perfect. Uh, this one's even thicker than the uh, Sterling Mud, uh, so it gives you even a, a more thick look and more muddy look. But the combination of the two are, are fantastic, so I really got a nice uh, little mud look. Now I am going to add a little bit of flocking to here, a um, little bit of plant life. But anywhere that's exposed that doesn't have the plant life, it'll have this nice muddy feel to it or any gaps in it, there'll be... Uh, textured mud underneath i didn't want to go as far as the drywall compound on this piece because you know it's just edging it's not most of it's covered so i didn't want to really have to do that so uh, i decided to use these textures instead so you can see i got a nice little mud look all the way along the bottom there so this is agrax Zerg shader and the color i can never say serpent serpia <laughs> uh and uh kind of kind of uh add that as uh just kind of rain weathering on top of these roofs um it's too it was too perfect when i was looking at it and i'm like yeah maybe i'll just add a little bit of this in here and just kind of strategically place it in there and this one i don't care as much if it dries a little more wet looking uh it should if it's grime or some uh, wet uh, water that's left behind uh, more so than uh, it should be as matte. So I'm just going to kind of distribute that all over the place. So then this is pretty much all painted. My final stages, I'm going to add some of this dollar store green moss, um, you know, buck fifty a bag. And you just, I use a pair of scissors, cut it up. I got a, a couple of tubs of this stuff kicking around the plunder den here. And uh, I, I actually, this is a really great cheap flocking. <laughs> like, I mean, and it actually has a really nice color. It's got this olive green color, which is great for what I'm doing here. So let's just move to the uh, battlefield. Everything's all done. I got my uh, English here raiding this uh, pirate, I don't know, pirate port or pirate city or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's built on docks and stuff, and uh, it came out great. I love these little towers, and it really goes well with that uh, pier that I've already built and the other sea walls I built. So you got kind of a whole little city going on here, or a little bit of a port, which is uh, awesome. But, uh, you know, maybe not historically correct, but you know me. I like to play around with history a little bit and uh, make the game tables really uh, a lot of fun to play on. So I'm just showing you that uh, roof is, uh, fits in nice. I'm going to take a look around the uh, game table. i got some of the ships that we painted on the channel here. Uh, Tartano, I just posted pictures of it, but uh, the other uh, sloop there I painted on the channel here. And a lot of these terrain pieces I built uh, on the channel. So I really kind of all add together to make a really cool, epic uh, game table. And kind of some of the elements that are here are actually all been added into these um, fortified sea walls. Uh, really happy. I'm really happy with those two-tone wood colors and that gray on there. It just looks fantastic. I'm really, really happy with all the way that looked. It's going to be really awesome to award this to the winner in the community of the Great Pirate Paint-Off Terrain Challenge. All right, that's pretty much it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.